Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More, and I am outside a commercial property I bought back in 2017 for $292,000, and it's pretty much been rented that whole time. Well, our tenants just moved out. Now I'm gonna take a look at the property, see how it looks. You can see someone left a trailer here. I'm thinking it's the neighbors across the street who work on stuff, but <laughs> what would my properties be without a trailer, camper, tires, something left on them. That way I know it's my property. But um, this has been a great property. I got a smoking deal on it, even though it was for sale forever and nobody else wanted this. So now I get to decide, do I rent it again? Do I sell it? Um, should I finish the basement, which could be a pretty sweet living area? There's all kinds of things to figure out on this property. Um, we'll take a look inside and I'll also show you what it looked like when I first bought it, because we did do quite a bit of work to this property as well. And this is one of the first commercial properties I ever bought, and I got so lucky. I was kind of spoiled um, getting into the commercial world because I bought this property. I wanted to fix it up a little bit and then put it up for rent, but I didn't want to go crazy because you never know what a commercial tenant's going to want. While we were fixing it up, someone drove by, saw we were working on it, asked if it was for rent, and we ended up renting it to that company. <laughs> so I literally didn't even have to list it, didn't have to wait at all to get it rented. Um, it was a very lucky commercial deal because that is one of the downsides with commercial real estate. Sometimes it can take a very long time to find a tenant. Um, sometimes you need to do a whole lot of work to them for that tenant and properties can sit vacant for a long time. Now this one is kind of a cool property too. Like it's got a real um, 19, like almost a mid century modern vibe to it. It was built in 1965 and um, just a cool property. It was originally a doctor's office, and then I think it became a dentist's office, and we'll show you inside what it looked like when I first bought it because a lot of that stuff was still there, and there's even a really cool piece of equipment in the basement that's still there as well. I don't know how old it is, but it's kind of cool. So um, let me know what you think on this one. We, we do have a slight amount of damage right there. I think that just happened. We had some real strong wind gusts here. But normally we kept this property in really good shape. It was an oil and gas company that rented from us. They always told us if there's any issues, anything wrong. And this is what it looked like when I first bought it. Not a whole lot different on the outside, but it's quite a bit different on the inside. You can see the uh, car repair place is still there. If I show it, I think I do. But I've heard a rumor that they are leaving and going to move to a different spot. So at that point, we might not have quite as much stuff or vehicles in and around our lot. And this is again an old video, so sorry, it's kind of weird with the sun. My phone and filming wasn't quite as good back, gosh, seven years ago now? It's crazy it's been that long. <laughs> so, um, and that building across the street also used to be a bowling alley long, long ago. So maybe I need to buy that property. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But this is what it looked like when I first got it. Like I said, a pretty interesting, cool building. It, this is a doctor's office and then a dentist's office and then um, it was vacant for a while. The owner had actually, I believe it had a dentist in there or was it a veterinarian something right before they put up for sale and they ended their lease and kicked them out before selling it because they thought it would be more valuable selling it vacant. And usually with commercial properties, they're usually more valuable selling them with a tenant in there, at least to an investor. Now, if it's an owner occupant who wants to move in, of course, it makes sense for it to be vacant. But for investors, they want them to be occupied. They want that income coming in. And banks also want that income coming in and then to be occupied as well to provide financing on them. So um, and this is what it, the reception area first. I actually found the old floor plans in the basement too, which was kind of cool. And we did add quite a bit of different things in here for the oil and gas company because since they came to us while we we're working on it they could say hey we want this we want that and we were able to um, accommodate them make some changes and customize it to them a little bit and they were paying forty five hundred dollars a month in rent all the way until well they had a three-year lease to start and then like i said i was brand new to commercial in the beginning i didn't really know what i was doing i don't think i even did an escalation clause for them um, I think we just did a three years at 4,500 each year. A lot of times with commercial, you'll bump the rent, you know, 3% each year. And, um, that helps pay for your, you know, taxes, insurance, things like that, that are always increasing. But I don't think I did that. And then 
their lease renewed at the worst time ever for me and the best time ever for them, I think it was right after COVID hit, like in March of 2020 or April of 2020, when nobody knew what was going on, everybody was freaking out and they said they wanted to stay, but they wanted to pay lower rent. So I actually agreed to $4,400 a month for another, was it three years, I believe, again, I didn't do any escalation clauses. I was just happy to have them stay there because there was so much uncertainty at that time about commercial real estate, residential real estate. Then we realized that that uncertainty turned into a buyer's frenzy and everything went crazy, but we didn't know that at the time. I still, you know, had a good tenant. They took care of the place, almost never asked for anything to be done and um, didn't have it go vacant during that time, which could have been very tricky um, as well. Now it looks way different now back in this area than it did back then so we'll show you exactly what it looks like now which is how it looked like when we fixed it up for them they took very good care of it but it's way different in this area but you can see um how it was set up as a doctor's office vet's office like that now this is a property now that i think about it um i should be talking to our electric company as far as getting led lights put in because i made that video about my office building to a 68,000 square foot strip mall, the grocery store, restaurant, my office, dance studio. Well, Colorado has their new law that any building with over 50,000 square feet has to reduce their carbon output by 20% or something. And so as part of that, we could get Excel, our local electric company, to come out, do an energy assessment, figure out where we can cut costs. And they installed LED lights in our building for free, at least in the grocery store dance studio in my office. I'm sorry, not the grocery store, my office, dance studio and restaurant. The grocery store, they said, uses too much power to put LED lights in there. I don't know how that makes sense. But anyway, I was talking to the guys at Excel contracts with a different company who put in all the LED lights. We did it in our office. It's already been done. And they said they're looking for more buildings to do with this with in this Excel program. I'm like, well, I don't have any more buildings that are over 50,000 square feet. They said, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have more than 50,000 square feet it can be for almost any commercial building unless it's like a grocery store or a place that uses has a bunch of coolers things like that so i was planning to send all my addresses of commercial properties to them and i had asked my assistant to do that not nikki but john and i'm not sure if that got done yet so i need to check on that there's my small tangent now this is what the building looks like right now so i was just there today this is after they moved out we met the um, oil and gas company to give us keys. They are moving to a different spot that has a couple acres of land because they wanted a yard to store that stuff. So I was hoping they would renew their lease. Um, I gave them a little higher price this time. <laughs> and I also gave them the option to buy it as well. So I didn't know if they're interested in buying. I'm like, hey, here's a buy it price too, if you're interested. And they came back after a while and said, no, we actually found a different place to rent that has a yard. That's what we really want. So it's like, okay, that's cool. But you can see we added this office that wasn't there before they wanted that put in. Um, it was just open. When I first bought it, we added the flooring, we painted everything. I think we did all the trim, which is just like the rubber sticky trim that lays in the floor kind of for commercial buildings. It's way cheaper and easier than other trim. Uh, we took out all of the doctor's office sinks, and plumbing and all of that. Now it's still on the floor, right? If anybody ever wants to turn this back into one, they could, but um, you know, I don't know if you would need a sink in every single uh, room. Cause there is, you know, small bathrooms throughout and sinks and plumbing throughout the building too. Uh, we replaced a couple of windows, I think, but a lot of these windows we kept, they're wood windows, they're in decent shape. And kind of gives, like I said, that mid-century vibe a little bit with the big window, well, windows all over, big windows. They left us a couple hangers. That's always nice of them. Uh, we added, you know, stuff like those counters right there, kind of for, um, you know, workspace. And then on the right here, too, if you notice, if we go back to that other video, which I'm not going to do, but you can if you want, there's just a real small counter right there. We put in this kitchen, put in granite, and the fridge so made a nice little eating space for them and then yeah as we move on mostly we just cleaned up all the rooms left this one with a sink 
um, because they wanted that for some reason. I forget why. So they did want us to leave one sink in one of the rooms. We did that. But yeah, most of the rooms we took everything out. It has weird closets all over too. And another, yeah, there's so many offices. So that could be one challenge with this building is it's big, right? It's almost 4,000 square feet on one floor. Plus it's got a full basement underneath it. We'll show you too. Uh, it's got quite a bit of yard and backyard. It's got double key deadbolts too. I didn't realize that we're not supposed to have those. We need to change those out. So those are um, a major safety hazard. The fire department actually told us in another building that had them. I didn't realize it too, that we needed to switch those out. But if there's a fire and issue, people can't get out, right? Unless they have that key. And um, I'm not even sure where that key is. So that's, that's not a good situation. Here's where we had a huge difference before. You might remember there's a sink, kind of an, an island area, other rooms. They want all that taken out to make a big work room, conference room. So we did that. And um, yeah, those are the big major changes. Like I said, little bathrooms throughout. And uh, it's a neat place. But yeah, I was saying there's so many offices. It's so big. It might be tough to find a business that wants this much space. Maybe not. Uh, it is in Eaton, Colorado. So the heart of oil and gas land. Although Colorado is trying to ban all drilling for oil and gas right now. That is on their agenda. And um, among other things they're trying to do in this state. So this area is not real happy about that. It's funny because they said it would add more jobs and help people who are minorities and lower income was one of the reasons why they're wanting to ban oil and gas. However, banning oil and gas would take away a massive amount of really high paying jobs for people with low income. And yeah, sure, if you want to throw minorities in there too. Um, but, you know, of course, the government and politicians know better than I do anyway. <laughs> Here's the main ADA bathroom we have too, which of course we're supposed to have. And uh, we did a little bit of work in there, but not much. It was already pretty much set up for that. So now we'll take a look at the basement. So one thing we could do, and it was kind of set up that way a little bit when I first bought it, was you could maybe split this into two different spaces because there's the parking spots in back. There's a parking lot in front. There's a couple spots where you could split it up. Maybe you could still keep some of the common areas. Um, there's some different ideas there. So like I said, I could rent it again. I could sell it. It's probably worth, I would say at least 600,000. I'm working on getting my light on my phone fixed here. Um, based on the size, even if it was even being vacant and I paid 292,000 for it, probably spent around a hundred thousand fixing it up in that range. So it's been a great deal. Fantastic, fantastic property. Just need to figure out what to do. Now, one of the dumbest things I ever did in my real estate career, not a huge mistake. It didn't cost me that much money, but as I try and find a light, I just gave up and used my phone. All this furniture down here, the cubicles, the chairs, tables, I had a friend of a friend who was emptying out an office and this is 2017 before I started my own office, Blue Steel Real Estate, before I bought that big building. I, he said, Hey, I've got a bunch of office furniture. I'm clearing out a building. It's yours to take for free if you come get it. So I had my guys rent a U-Haul, go grab all this office furniture, not the wires. I'm not sure what those are from and bring it here in case I needed it. I think I've used a couple chairs and that's it. Nobody wants cubicles. Nobody wants this stuff. They told me there's a bunch of valuable like hard drives and stuff in there. Um, it was boxes and boxes full of like hard drive cases, not the actual hard drive. So it turns out, I don't think those were worth anything. And so, um, yeah, did not turn out to be like my best choice in life, but it wasn't the end of the world either. It cost, you know, some hours in a U-Haul rental. But um, it was interesting. <laughs> so not only has this building worked out well as a rental, but it's provided some storage space for random junk I bought and don't need as well. And we have more random junk in here too that you might recognize soon. But yeah, I think I did actually use a couple chairs and some other stuff. Uh, but yeah, not, not very much. Now, that area, I, I showed it, I was got distracted, has sprinklers too. That's the only part of the building that has sprinklers in the ceiling. And we think that's because that's where they kept their medical records. And that must have been a requirement to have sprinklers in that room so that they don't burn up. Um, because there's, uh, there aren't sprinklers in the rest of the building, but they're in that one particular room. And down here, I'm like, holy cow, what happened? There must have had um, some kind of leak or something break. But I don't remember. 
us sending our guys over. Maybe we did, but um, this is just a mechanical room. Um, this building just has a couple of furnaces. It's not, you know, we don't have rooftops. We don't have anything crazy. And a lot of times with commercial properties, you'll see people putting up 20, 30,000, you know, dollar rooftops. And I feel like if you just use regular furnace and ACs, it's way cheaper and they almost work better and it's easier to control them because our rooftops are a pain in the butt that I've got on some of my other buildings. This is one of the cool things that's been here. I think that's an old EKG machine from who knows how long ago, but it's been here since I bought it. And I thought about taking it with me, but I think it kind of belongs in this building. And luckily nobody's messed with it or taken it, but I, I, I am the only one who kind of has access to the basement. I think the oil and gas company may have had a key, but they never came down here, did anything. Then here are the original blueprints that came with this property too. And I'll show you some of the original plans here um, later on, but that's always kind of cool too, to keep or see the blueprints from a property. Now here's a really interesting space. I thought, or always thought this was supposed to be a residential apartment. And that's what the person who sold this to me too said as well. Um, you can have a residential apartment here. Obviously we haven't done it. But gosh, it would be worthwhile to do it if we ever have the time and manpower to do it. And like I said, there's more random stuff in here. I put in here from, I think this is a small restaurant I have in Greeley. And we took a bunch of that stuff out and put it in here. Just because sometimes this stuff is worth a lot. And I didn't know at the time what was worth money and what wasn't. So I'm like, yeah, just store it in there for right now. Random bar stools that we bought for either, I think for the bar, that was a debacle. That's done and over with now, thank goodness. Another double keyed deadbolt, which is not safe. So we need to change that one out too. I didn't realize it had those. I don't think I realized how unsafe those were either until uh, uh, recently, a year or so ago. But if we were to finish this basement space and put a couple bedrooms in here, you know, we could probably rent it for 1500 maybe more. And it would add a couple hundred thousand dollars in value to this property. So that might be something I seriously consider doing now too because it shouldn't cost us nearly that much to finish it out. Although with permits and plumbing, electrical, there needs to be some change in heating, you know, building out everything, it would cost some money, but it'd be a really cool little apartment with the kind of the underground courtyard it's got and um, the privacy it has. So over here, I don't know if we'll do anything or just, but just keep it storage. There's no windows or anything. And it's a nice storage space. And um, I could clear it out too and allow it to be rented with the space above, which could add quite a bit of value as well. The oil and gas company did not want it, so we didn't worry about it then. But for a new company, that might make sense. And I really don't need cubicles and different junk. So that's the property. I've got some decisions to make. Let me know what you think. And then um, we'll show you too. Here are what the original floor plans look like, which are kind of cool. But um, they just, at one point, it was just supposed to be a crawl space where all that storage was with this fire sprinkler. So kind of glad they didn't do that. And then they list the other spaces, future storage. But like I said, we probably could make some kind of living space there if we wanted to.